Hello lovelies, this year along with our super popular excellent productivity papers for science and maths we now have psychology papers as well. They know how well we did on biology ones and this year we're aiming to do the same with psychology. So just like the other papers, Laura, our head of psychology, has gone through all the trends and the patterns from last year's and she's used her in-depth knowledge of the specification and past papers and the exam to predict this year's psychology topics. You can find all of the predictive papers in the link in the description and then you can go and watch the walkthroughs as well. Now in the walkthroughs that Laura has created for these videos she is going to be showing you what the top mark band answer looks like in psychology. So these videos will guide you through the skills to interpret exam questions and then show you how to structure your answers effectively. The questions in our predictive papers mirror the style of the actual exam questions so this will help you understand exactly what is being asked what to include in your answers and then how to organise them effectively. This will pay you to apply the same skills in your real exams this week. So both the predictive papers and our video walkthroughs are available on our bootcamp or you can use them as a starting point for your revision. However, please remember to review all of the material comprehensively. Do not skip anything as these are just predictions. We do not have any inside information we have not seen the real exams, we do not know exactly what is going to be on them, so please revise everything. But if you want a list of things to start with, if you're a bit stuck, then here is a list of things that you can revise. Now we know for paper one, which is cognition and behaviour, there are four sections in the paper, memory, perception, development and research methods. So we're going to go through each of these topics. You can use the timestamps in the description down below to jump to the section that you're interested in or you can just grab a cup of tea, sit back and listen. So for memory, we wanted to learn the types of long-term memory. So um, episodic, semantic and procedural memory. Be able to describe each type and provide clear examples to illustrate them. We want you to look at the multi-store model of memory. So familiarise yourself with the multi-store model, including how information moves from the environment to the long-term memory store. Understand the features of each memory store, such as coding, capacity and duration, and be prepared to evaluate the model considering both its strengths, so supporting evidence, and its limitations, for example, oversimplification. So Murdoch's serial position curve study, where Murdoch's study focused on the primary and the recency effect. Make sure you can describe its aim, procedure, procedure and findings and conclusion. Be ready to evaluate the study, considering strengths, limitations and supporting evidence. The theory of reconstructive memory. So familiarise yourself with Bartlett's theory of reconstructive memory, which suggests that memory is an active process involving reconstruction. You may want to use Bartlett's war as a good study that supports this theory and be prepared to evaluate the theory, considering both supporting and contradictory evidence. And we'd like you to look at context as a factor in memory accuracy. So understand how context can affect the accuracy of memory, both positively and negatively. So you use the Gordon and Badley um, study to illustrate the impact of context on memory. And again, be prepared to evaluate this theory, considering its strengths and limitations. When we're thinking about perception, we'd like you to look at sensation and perception. So define sensation and perception and distinguish between these two concepts. Providing examples to illustrate the differences between sensation, like perceiving sensory input, and perception, interpreting sensory input. We'd like you to look at monocular and binocular depth clues. So we're ready to describe the different depth cues, including monocular clues like height in place, relative size, occlusion and linear perspective, as well as binocular clues like written disparity or convergence. Practice identifying these cues in various scenarios and be prepared for application-based questions. Visual illusions is another topic, so make sure you understand visual illusions to fictional illusions, like the Kazanaki Triangle. Explain why these illusions are experienced and perceived as illusions. We'd like you to look at theories of perception, so be able to describe and evaluate both Gibson's direct theory and Gregory's constructivist theory of perception and make sure you're clear about the differences between these theories and apply the appropriate one to relevant questions. So the impact of emotional and perceptual set. Now emotion, emotion is just one of the factors that have been found to impact on the perceptual set. Others are culture and motivation. You need to be able to explain how emotion impacts this and again be able to evaluate the work in this area, the strengths and limitations. Consider when and where the research was carried out and how it was done. 
when we're looking at development, the factors that affect early brain development. Be aware of the various factors influencing early brain development, focusing on the environmental factors and pay attention to factors like smoking and maternal infection, which highlights the importance of nurture versus nature in this debate. Piaget studies development in education, so looking at how Piaget studies cognitive development are applied in education, and they have been widely used. So provide examples of Piaget's theories being implemented in educational practices and evaluate their effectiveness. When we're looking at learning styles, familiarise yourself with three learning styles, so visual, auditory and kinesthetic. Prepare examples to illustrate the differences between these learning styles and be ready to evaluate the concept of learning styles, considering whether using them actually improves memory and learning outcomes in real life educational settings. We'd like you to look at research methods. Now, this is a big, big topic. You need to embrace research methods across all papers. Recognise that research methods content can appear in both exam papers, not just in paper one. So while paper one is finding require the main section of research methods, it's critical to understand that research methods knowledge can and is examined across the entire course. So familiarise yourself with examples of research by identifying key elements such as the aim, hypothesis, variables, control measures and samples used and data collected. Exposure to different research scenarios will help better prepare you for the piece of research you're facing in the situation and using resources such as our predictive papers on our walkthroughs to strengthen your understanding and application of research method. Good luck, Lovelies. We are here with you every single step of the way. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>